Stoptrades.com. Today we have with us Greg Johnson. Greg is CEO of Prophecy Platinum. Prophecy can be traded as NKL on the TSX Venture, and it also can be traded as PNIKF on the OTC. Thanks, Greg, for being here with us today. Good to be back. Greg, for some time I've been talking about the outperformance of the Platinum, platinum Group Metals. In the past year, silver and uh, is down 25%, gold's down about more than 17%. Yet platinum uh, is only down 10%, and, and palladium is the only metal that's in positive territory. So could you talk to us a little bit about the platinum group metals and their outperformance, uh, and why even palladium is getting a specific uh, advantage in this market? Yeah, I think um, I think basically it, it it all comes down to you know supply demand fundamentals on uh, platinum and palladium, and because of the concentration of production for both metals in southern Africa and, and Russia, uh, and the fact that the production from mines has you know basically been on the the decline since about 2004 or 2005 for both sets of metals has set um, uh, you know, a fundamentally different picture for platinum and palladium versus, say, gold and silver. Um, that uh, production decrease has is, is basically been coming out of year-on-year -year drops, particularly out of South Africa, uh, as many of those mines uh, have become you know, very high-cost uh, producers, uh, labor strikes, um, you know, roving brownouts or blackouts uh, on their electric grid, which is you know, being, you know, basically overwhelmed uh, and has seen lack of investment. And so that fundamental increasing demand, which has largely been driven by uh, catalytic converters in both the gasoline and diesel uh, engine markets globally, but particularly in the developing uh, countries, the BRIC countries, uh, has been a key factor, which I think has underpinned the overperformance or outperformance of uh, platinum and palladium versus gold and silver. Greg, let's focus a little bit on palladium. Can you talk to us a little bit, we spoke before about in previous interviews about the platinum supply. Can you talk to us a little bit about the palladium supply and the increasing demand? Yeah, so that the same trends that we were talking about just in general with, with um, platinum are, are true, but to a, a larger degree in terms of the supply-demand imbalance that's developed. Uh, the palladium market has been growing more rapidly, uh, you know, effectively since early 1980. Uh, it's been uh, a year-on-year -year increase. There was a bit of a spike in the technology years in which uh, palladium actually was more valuable than, than platinum on a per ounce basis. Um, but effectively, you know, following that, that period, we saw kind of a resetting and readjustment, uh, and we've seen a more rapid growth annually, um, particularly in catalytic converters for palladium than platinum, and we've seen a more sustained and more pronounced decline in production. And I think that's set up uh, a fundamental imbalance in the market, which has become particularly obvious last year, where effectively the total demand outstripped mine supply by about 14%, um, which, is a, which is a huge deficit uh, for that market to be running at. And I think it's been really uh, the market's pricing that in. It's anticipated that this year will also be a significant supply deficit, and that just can't be made up very easily just through recycling. It really is uh, going to affect the underlying pricing of the metal, and in, in previous you know, periods of, of this kind of shortage, we've seen the automobile manufacturers themselves actually starting to stockpile metal because they needed certainty of supply in order to make sure that they could you know, deliver the products that go into these uh, catalytic converters. Let's focus a little bit on Prophecy Platinum's Wellgreen deposit. Can you talk to us about this, your pr potential production of both platinum and also palladium? Yeah, um, you know, as as one of the largest undeveloped, uh, open pitable uh, platinum palladium resources really in the world, um, you know, the project uh, would be a significant producer of both metals. We've got about a one to one ratio 
of platinum to palladium. Um, and in fact, we produce just a bit more uh, palladium in our mine plan, you know, on an ounce basis than we do, you know, platinum. Uh, we typically would show, because these two metals, you know, as of recently have, have kind of been, um, you know, platinum priced at about three times the value of palladium. But with these changes recently, the outperformance of palladium, that number is starting to decrease. And, and typically we might show the value of the palladium, for instance, you know, relative to platinum, and it makes it look less significant. But if we saw a period like we did in the late 90s where palladium, once again, is higher priced than platinum, you know, it would become, you know, the more important metal for us, and we actually produce more palladium ounces than, than platinum. And these are pretty significant numbers. Right now we're projecting we'd be the third largest uh, platinum and palladium producer in North America after Stillwater and, and Valet. Uh, so, you know, we're looking at a, a significant global producer. Greg, let's focus a little bit about the current market environment, especially with regards to financing uh, projects. You've been in the junior mining sector for a long time now. Can you give us any insight into where Prophecy Platinum is right now at that point? And if you can give us any insight into the, 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 finance, the financing in, in the sector right now, that would be appreciated. Yeah, it's been, you know, one of the toughest periods for, for financing companies in the sector that we've seen, you know, really uh, since 2008 or, or back in, in the lows, 30-year um, low in the bear market back in 99, 2001. Uh, it's been a very difficult, you know, uh, area, particularly for uh, projects in the gold sector. You know, there's a lot of competition. There's a lot of people out looking for the same capital dollars and, you know, the market uh, is, you know, turned, you know, towards an extreme bearishness and extreme negative sentiment uh, period uh, right now. Um, you know, fortunately, because of the fundamental dynamics that we've been talking about in terms of the supply, demand and balance for platinum and palladium, there is more investor interest in, in our sector, and we're seeing good interest from uh, investors in terms of uh, particularly ones who have invested in the company in the past to potentially um, you know, put additional money to work, understanding uh, what type of objectives that we're looking to deliver um, on our next engineering study and next resource update that we're targeting for, for Q1. But we've reached a point in the market where um, you know, in my career in the industry, you know, I, I really don't remember too many points a couple of different times in those extremes in the market where you see this kind of disconnect between the prices of the metals, even with the fallen metals, and the value of the, of the junior resource particular, in particular. And uh, these junior resource names uh, are, are really, um, you know, at this point at one of the cheapest levels they've been at kind of decade level uh, basis, and I think you know, in terms of people's interest in the sector, it's often because of the outsized gains that they can get uh, through you know successful expansion of deposits and advancement. And uh, these opportunities don't come often where you see investor sentiment so negative that uh, you know these things are, are priced at these kinds of levels. And I think you know it's hard to, to tell exactly where we are in this. But, um, you know, I think highlighting the extreme undervaluation uh, that we're seeing right now uh, and for some investors who are able to consider uh, starting to take, you know, positions in, in stories they like, high-quality names, good management teams, large assets that are going to survive, I think, you know, may turn out to be, you know, very, very well-timed here. You talked about the potential upside uh, in, with a junior mining and a well-run junior mining company. Can you talk to us about the well green deposit and some of the exploration upside, uh, some of the pot potential that is there? Yeah, we're quite excited about uh, the exploration potential on the project. Um, you know, last fall's program not only included uh, drilling in the, the main well green deposit, um, which is already world-class in scale at more than 7 million ounces of contained metal. But um, in addition to that, to undertaking surveys to take a look at the areas around the deposit. Um, you know, in the mining industry, it's, it's often said the best place to find a mine is, is right next to an existing one. And that's because, the, you know, the geologic characteristics which um, are going to allow for an economic mine to be developed um, oftentimes, if you've already found one deposit, if you can find those same characteristics nearby, it's one of your highest probability of success type uh, exploration targets. And 
So taking a look at the area around the well green you know, system uh, at you know, potential geologic targets there is something that could really uh, be very effective in terms of being able to demonstrate you know, additional size and growth potential and, and potentially looking at improving economics through development of maybe even higher grade deposits that are near surface. Um, our work last year undertook to do geophysical surveys, geochemical surveys where you know, we were out and mapping uh, the ground for different electrical and magnetic properties, taking samples of the soils which are, are weathered um, bedrock and so are a very good primary indicating tool for, for the base metals and for the platinum group metals and developing some very exciting targets. We've recently updated our presentation uh, showing some of these targets, but uh, we have two targets, one which is about the same size as well green in terms of aerial extent, and a second one that's about one and a half times larger that has the same type of magnetic response as we see in uh, our ultramafic host rocks, as well as uh, concentrations of metals in the soils, which are a very good indicator of potential, uh, you know, from drilling and trenching and other exploration activities. So quite, uh, quite excited about these targets and looking forward to, as part of our program this year, to put some holes into those. And, and it can always be exciting when you've got a project that's advancing, you know, forward on development and advancement and adding value and de-risking, which typically, you know, right now if we look in the marketplace, uh, the average advanced development stage company trades at about 10 times higher valuation than an early development stage company such as ourselves. So if you can, in addition to advancing towards feasibility and increasing valuation, if you can also be adding resource and adding some of that excitement of a new discovery uh, to a story, that, that can be something that uh, really can add a multiplier effect uh, you know, in terms of the interest in the company. Well, Greg, thanks for being here with us today to talk about the Platinum Group Metals and about the Well Green Deposit. Thanks a lot. We'll look forward to uh, updating you again uh, in the near future. Mm -hmm.